Hey grade 12 and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to be working on question 6 of Gauteng's 2022 paper 1 June exam. So the first question 6.1 says, for how long must 50,000 rand be invested so that it can double at an interest rate of 8.5% on the straight line method? Give your answer in years and months. So they're asking how much must this amount be invested so that it can double. So it is growing. So we're going to use a growth formula. And then they give us the rates. And also they say on a straight line method. So this is not compound growth. This is simple interest growth. And so the simple interest growth formula looks like this. It's A is equal to P multiplied by 1 plus I multiplied by N. Okay, so it's not raised to the power of n, it's multiplied by n. And now because they say how long must 50,000 be invested, the money that is invested is your principal amount. So that is our principal amount. So in place of P, we're going to put the 50,000 rand. And then they also tell us the interest. They tell us that it's 8.5% per annum on straight line method. So we're going to have 1 plus so 8.5% as a percentage is going to be, of course, 8.5 over 100. And so that will give you 0, 0.085. So I'm saying plus 0, 0.085. And the question is saying for how long? So since it's for how long, we're actually trying to find N. So N is missing. So we can say times N. And so we see that we actually need the value of A. So notice they say for how long must 50,000 Rand be invested so that it can double. So the amount that you get after these specific years that this 50,000 Rand is growing is going to be double of whatever you invested. So double of 50,000 would be 100,000. And so that is your value of A. So 100,000. And so all we have to do is just solve for N. Okay, in order to solve for n, you see that in this bracket, we have 1 plus then the 0, 0,085 is being multiplied by n. So in order to get into the n, we first have to get rid of what is creating this bracket, and that will be the 50,000. So since the 50,000 is being multiplied by the bracket, to get rid of it, you would divide both sides of the equation by 50,000 rand. And so if we say 100,000 divided by 50,000, Remember, 100,000 is double of 50,000, so that would just give you a 2. And then what we have is equal to, the 50,000s would cancel here, and now the bracket is open. We have 1 plus 0, 0,085 times n, which we'll just give you 0, 0,085 n. So we're still looking for n. On this side of the equation, you can see that we have two terms. Terms are always separated by plus and minus signs. So here's a plus sign. So this is your first term, second term. We need to take the one over so that we can get that alone. So we have two minus one, which is just one, is equal to 0, 0,085 n. And then in order to solve for n, we will just divide both sides of the equation by 0, 0,085. And we can go ahead and put that onto the calculator and see what we get. So you see, we get 11, so n is equal to 11, 7, 6, 4, 7, and this keeps going. But then they tell us that we need to give our answers in years and months. Okay, so right now the n would represent years because this is not being compounded monthly. We didn't divide the interest in two months because it's on straight line methods. So the n is telling you the amount of years. So first of all, you can start by taking the whole number that you have. You know that it's definitely 11 years already. So we have the 11 years separately. Then we still have these decimals. We still have the zero comma. So you can remove 11 from this number. So if we just say minus 11. And so we see, okay, we have this point seven six four seven zero five, And this keeps going. So we have to find out. This is in years right now because everything here is in years. But instead of leaving it like this, we need to put it in months. So think about how we convert something from years to months. If one year is equal to 12 months, 
then it must mean that if you have something in years, you just have to multiply it by 12 and then it will be in months because 1 times 12 is 12. So we're going to take this decimal as it is. We're going to take the 0, 0,764 years and we're going to multiply it by 12 so that we can get the months. So I'm taking this answer, the 0 point, this that I have, and I'm going to multiply that by 12. When I multiply by 12, you can see that we get 9.1764 and that keeps going. So that means that's 9 months and 0.1764 months as well we still that is still all in months but now you have to think about it like this we are saying that this money gets invested and then it's going to double after a specific amount of years and months in nine months exactly nine months the money would not have doubled yet because we still have the 0.1764 so instead of saying nine months Round it up to 10 months because in 10 months, you would definitely have 100,000. You actually have more than 100,000. So that's why we're going to round it up to 10 months because when we round it up to 10 months, we know we're at least going to have 100,000. Even if we have a bit over that amount, we will have 100,000 instead of less than 100,000. So this would be 11 years. N is actually equal to 11 years and 10 months. So this is how you always have to consider these things, even in future value and present value. You have to think about by this time, will I have that amount that they're asking for or will I have less than it? OK, and you need to always have either that amount or at least more than it. OK, so that is it for this question. And then we move on to the next question. OK, so question 6.2 says a cell phone valued at 24,000 rand depreciates at 18 percent per annum on the reducing balance method, determine the value of the cell phone after three years. So because it's depreciating, we're going to use a depreciation formula, but they specifically say reducing balance and reducing balance is always going to be compound depreciation. And that formula looks like this. So this is the formula for compound depreciation. As you can see, it looks like the compound growth formula, but instead we have a minus so that the interest can be taken out of this money. And now to figure out what is A and what is P, we're going to look at the fact that they said a cell phone valued at this depreciates. So the money that depreciates, that is going to be your principal amount because what is happening is that this money is going to get smaller. It's the starting value. It's where we are starting off. We started off at 24,000 Rand and then this money is going to depreciate. So of course that is our value of P. Then we also have the interest rate. They tell us it's at 18% per annum but also notice they don't say compounded monthly or quarterly it's just per annum so that is going to be our interest and then they also tell us that it has to be after three years what is the value of the cell phone after three years and that is of course our n value so we can go ahead and just substitute all of those in their correct places but when we're talking about the interest, you also have to just convert that into decimals or you can put it as a fraction, but it's easier as a decimal. So it's 18 percent per annum. So since it's in percent, it's 18 over 100 and just put that as a decimal. That is just 0 comma 18. So we're just saying the 24,000 and then multiply by one minus 0 0.18 raised to the power of just three years. This is not compounded anyhow. And so the A amounts that we're going to get, put this onto the calculator and we finally get our accumulated amount or depreciated amount as 13,232 rand and 83 cents rounded off to two decimals because it's money. Okay. So now moving on to the last question in this financial math section. So our next question is 6.3 and we have X rand is invested into an account at an interest rate of 12% per annum compounded monthly. Three years later, 2x rand is deposited into the same account. After seven years, there is this amount in the account. Determine how much money was invested at the beginning. That is the value of X. 
So whenever they start mentioning things like this, they tell you a certain amount was invested into an account. And then they start saying three years later, it, another amount was invested. You should already know this is timelines. So this is a timeline that we're going to be working with. Okay, so x is first invested. Then three years later, this amount is invested. And then they're also telling us that after seven years, we know how much is in the account. So let's draw a timeline. As you can see, the last years that they mentioned, they said after seven years, this is the total amount in the account. So because it's after seven years, it means that this timeline is only running for seven years. So this is how we can actually draw the timeline. We're going to start at year one. And I like to call it terms and not really years because sometimes they're not really referring to years. Sometimes they're referring to months. Sometimes it's quarters. So I'm just going to call it terms. And this timeline is running for seven years. So we're going to end at term seven. And the reason I start at term zero is because no years have passed yet. I cannot say one full year has passed this is just when the person opens this account. So what happens in the beginning? They tell us that XRAN is invested into an account. So that's what goes in term zero. We have XRAN coming into this account and it's being invested at an interest rate of 12% per annum compounded monthly. So we know what the interest is as well. The interest is 12%, which as a decimal 12 of 100 is 0 0.12. But it's compounded monthly as well. So we have to say over 12. So we can divide that interest into months. So then they say three years later, 2x rand is deposited into the same account. So we're seeing it as this is the first time the person puts money into the account. No years has passed yet. Then three years later. So it's going to be three years later since we had year zero. It's year one, year two, year three. So at term three, new money gets invested into this account and the money is 2x so putting 2x into this account now and then they also tell us that after seven years there is this amount so after the seven years at year seven at the end of year seven we have this amount 276,558 rand and 75 cents that's how much we have in the account after seven years so the question is for you to determine how much money was invested at the beginning. Okay, because these are just investments being made, you're expecting the money to grow. So we're going to actually use, and it's really, it's compounded monthly. So we're going to use the compound interest formula. We're really just using this formula. A is equal to P bracket 1 plus I raised to the power of N. So when we're putting this in, we have the principal amount. The first amount we have is X. X is being invested. So we're saying X, open bracket. Then we have one plus the interest rate for the whole period is this because they never said that the interest changed at any point. So we still have the 0, 12 all over 12. And then now when you have to raise it to an exponent, this is where you have to think about how long was this money in the account? Because X Rand was put at T0, it means that this is how long it stayed. It stayed from T0 all the way till the end. It stayed till T7. So we're going to have to raise this to the power of 7. But remember, this is compounded monthly. So we need to turn that 7 years into months by saying times 12. Okay, so that is the end of the X. We have now inputted the X and also inputted how long it has stayed in this account at this interest rate. Then we move on to the next deposit that we have, which is this 2x. So 2x came in at term 3. So then we're going to have to say plus because it came in at term 3 plus 2x. And we open a bracket and then we have 1 plus again at the same interest rate. So 0 0.12 all over 12 raised to the power of and now you have to think about how long did this money 2x stay in this account it only stayed from term 3 all the way to term 7 so counting at term 3 term 4 5 6 7 that is four years that it stayed in the account another way of looking at that you could have just said t7 7 minus 3 that's 4 so it stayed only in the account for four years and again because 
is compounded monthly, we have to say times 12. And as you can see, no other money was invested or deposited into this account. But then at the end, at T7, the total amount in this account or the accumulated amount is this money. And that's what we're going to put in place of A. So let me just move this a bit more to the right. And so this money is going to be in place of A. This is what all of this is equal to. And this is what we have so long. So we just need to solve for X. So before moving forward, I would just like to simplify a few things like this. 1 plus 0 0.12 over 12. That can be put as a single fraction. I can also just put that as a single number and this as well. So we still have that accumulated amount is equal to, and then we have the X. And then this inside the bracket is going to become, so all of this is just going to become this simple decimal. Now, sometimes the decimal looks more complicated than this. In that case, you can put it as a fraction. But because this decimal looks simple, I'm just going to take it like this. So that's just a 1.01 raised to the power of 7 times 12. So 7 multiplied by 12 gives you 84. So raised to the power of 84. Then we have plus and we have the 2x. And this again in the bracket notice is the exact same thing. One plus this. And so that just becomes the 1.01 like here. Raised to the power of 4 times 12. That is 48. Okay, so now that everything looks much neater, we can now focus on solving for x. In order to solve for x, look at the right hand side of this equation. Notice how many terms there are here. So terms are always separated by plus and minus signs. Since we have a plus sign, it would mean that this is one term on its own and that is one term on its own. Now, in the first term and the second term, we're going to take x out as a common factor. I know that it's not the only thing that is common. We still have this also being common, but we just want to separate the x. So we can take x out as a common factor over here. And this is what's going to happen. We open up a bracket and we're looking at the first term and saying, what must we multiply in to x in order to get back to this? Or you can even just say this first term divided by x. So x and x would cancel and you would just be left with this bracket, 1 comma 0, 1 raised to the power of 84. And then we'll do that to the second term as well. It's like seeing it as this divided by the x. And so you see the x there and that x would cancel and you just be left with the plus 2 and then bracket 1 comma 0 1 raised to the power of 48. And then of course on the left hand side we still have this number. And now if you look at this equation you will notice that now that we've removed the x all of this inside the bracket, they're all numbers and we need to just solve for x. So in order to solve for x, we can divide both sides of the equation by all of this. But looking at this, this looks quite messy. So something you can do is because you know you're dividing both sides of the equation by this. It just means that this will cancel and this will cancel and you'll be left with the x. So I'm just instead going to write it as x is equal to and you can just say this divided by that. That's what you can write instead of putting all of this just to avoid the chance of making mistakes. Okay, so that looks better. So if we put this all onto the calculator and just be careful as you're putting everything in, that's why it's always important to make sure that you wrote it properly. So put it all onto the calculator and let's see what it gives us. And now we finally see that x is just equal to so as you can see, those zeros, it's 0, 0, 009, so you don't have to round off to two decimals. It's just 50,000 Rand. So X is equal to 50,000 Rand. And that's our final answer. Okay, so that is it for this video on question six. And I hope to see you in the next video on calculus.